Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Vectorworks video and today very exciting news we've got the update to Vectorworks 2024 Service Pack 4. So this update just came out very recently and I want to break down some of the cool new features including the AI visualizer for you in this video. So if you go to the Vectorworks uh, blog you'll notice that on the front page here a bit more information about the latest update. Um, this is actually the fourth update this year already, so we've had a thick and fast set of updates running for VectorX already. And this is something you'll see with VectorX from now on, much more regular updates for the software. Now, really excited about this new AI visualizer. I've yet to test this, so this will be the first time I'm actually testing this out with you uh, in this video. So let's just jump into this. Um, you might want to scroll down and have a look at this. It's basically using the Vectorworks cloud services. So there's a couple of things you need to do in order to get this up and running. Just make sure you update to the latest cloud services and I'll show you how to add the visualizer to existing workspaces as well. Okay, so if we click onto the little video here, you'll see a few really nice examples of Vectorworks just showing you how to use the very simple interface for the AI visualizer. But the fact this is actually built directly into Vectorworks is really, really cool. And I think it will mean that we can really quickly access this new developing emerging technology uh, in our design workflow very, very dynamically. Um, and there's some pretty cool examples that they're showing. So yeah, I'm excited to test this out and see where it leads. So let's get started on this new tutorial. And there's a few other nice features as well if you're interested, but today I'm gonna to focus on the AI visualizer for you. So let's get started. Okay, everybody, so how do we go about using the new AI Visualizer in Vectorworks Service Pack 2024? Uh, well, it's very straightforward, and one of the first things you need to do is get your cloud services up to date. So if you do want to do this, um, just scroll down, and a really good tip is just click onto the AI Visualizer forum over here. So I've got that web page up here, and you notice the very first thing you need to do is just update to this version of the Vectorworks cloud services. So I've got my Vectorworks Cloud Services application down here. I'll just open this up and you'll notice that if I actually go up to the very, very top, um, basically I can tune up that to be the very, very latest update. So you might want to go to About Vectorworks Cloud, just make sure it's bang up to date and that's the very first step. Okay, so the second step is to move across over to Vectorworks. So let's fire up Vectorworks, um, and I've got a project here that I'm going to test the visualization on. And this is a really nice project that I did for a small sort of gym uh, day room for a client. Well, actually not that small, quite a nice sort of sizable project. And I did a few different options for this client, um, but this was the uh, original design concept that I really personally liked um, that we basically developed. Okay, so what you're gonna need to do, if you're using a, a workspace that isn't the original workspace, you may well need to just go down to your current workspaces and basically click edit workspace. So you no doubt uh, if you're using my enhanced workspace, you're definitely going to want to do this. So what I recommend is you go to the model menu and you'll notice that I've already added the visualizer here. So very, very straightforward. Just go over to all menus and scroll down until you see the AI visualizer drag it across and just put it wherever you like. Um, in fact, you can add it a number of times, not a problem. So maybe I want to add it here at this top section as well. Okay, so I have it actually twice in the workspace. And when I click OK, that workspace of course will be saved. Okay, great, so that's the very first step. Now, in terms of the next step, it's actually really, really straightforward. Um, so let me show you how this works. Just let that workspace reload for a second. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of show you a couple of images on the project. You can see I've got some saved views of my project here. And you know, it's quite a nice little model with some interior and some exterior detail already. So this is gonna be a great example to test out the visualizer um, and see how it copes with both internal and external architecture as well. Now, the very first thing I think you'll want to do is go over to your sheet layers and basically select uh, one of your viewports that you've got. So with my viewport selected, okay, I might need to just click update just to ensure that viewport is as updated as it can be. And then we can actually launch the visualizer straight off. So just let this viewport update, there we go. So all we really need to do is basically go to web palettes and down we go to web palettes and you can see the AI visualizer palette here. So when we launch this palette, 
it will immediately come up um, and you can see this is a previous sort of project there so I'm just going to click refresh and you'll notice that the new selected viewport is already in my visualizer here okay fantastic so how do we actually generate our images well, all we need to do, um, let's just go sort of full screen. And by the way, we can move this visualization to the other screen as well as we're working, which is really, really cool. So I'm just going to make this a bit more full screen. And the very first thing you're going to want to do is type in some prompting. And now we're all getting used to generative AI prompting uh, using Midjourney and LookX and other sort of AI software. You may have seen me review on my channel. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is just ask it something pretty simple, create a timber cladding option. And here down at the bottom, we can also tell it not to do things. So uh, do not replace stone. Okay, so I'm interested to see what happens here. Now here's the creativity slider. So with this, we can basically slide this all the way up, get very, very creative or all the way down, um, maybe to just keep the form quite consistent. So I'm just going to go for a very low creativity to begin with. I'm basically going to generate the image using not just a text prompt, but the Vectorworks image that I've loaded already. And let's go for it and we'll click uh, Generate. Now you're going to notice that the immediate reaction is it says queued. And just give it a moment or two. Once it starts um, moving beyond the queuing stage, you should see quite a nice little progress bar emerging down at the bottom. So here we go. Now we're generating. It's already kind of uploading this, I think, to cloud services um, and the cloud services are beginning to process the image. OK, so you'll notice that a low resolution preview of the image appears on the screen already. And basically, we just need to let that refine for a few moments. And there we go. That is my original image transformed. Now, what's really nice about the visualizer in Vectorworks now is we can kind of slide back and forward to see what it actually did. I really like this feature. Um, and you can sort of see that it's done some quite nice job. It's taken this grass. I mean, it sort of already interpreted that this would be ground and, you know, we've got some grass here. Um, certainly changed the color of the building in the background, but I'm not too worried about that. And basically it's kind of created a different style of timber cladding to the original option that I had. So definitely some nice improvements and the image, you know, definitely looks um, different and we've got this nice sort of timber decking here. Now, the really great thing is if we're happy with that, we could click upscale and we can also click create a bitmap object or we can actually click replace viewport. So I will look at those in a minute. Just to begin with, though, let me just go to uh, create viewport image. OK, so what that did, if I click back into Vectorworks and just sort of minimize my visualizer. OK, what I'll actually do, if it's all right, I will move that across. So you'll notice that it's now added a bitmap of the uh, sort of preview image into my sheet layer. And this, of course, is just a regular bitmap that I can resize, do all sorts of the usual things with, as well as uh, the wonderful image effects, which Vectorworks has had built in for a while. So if I kind of want to, you know, fiddle around with things like the exposure, make it a little bit more sepia, maybe soften the edges, um, auto levels, that kind of thing. Those are image effects that I can apply directly into the sort of bitmap, if you like. So I think that's pretty work, pretty good. I'm pretty impressed so far. So let's try a, another generation of this particular image. Okay, everybody. So for my uh, second test, the main thing that I want to do here is basically see what happens if I increase the creativity and well, how far should we go? Let's go to about 50% creative. And maybe I also want to change this. Let's change this terminology to brick. Um, we'll ask it not to replace the stone again. So we're only doing two minor changes and we'll click generate. So let's see what happens when we do the same image with a slightly different prompt, uh, but increasing the creativity to about halfway. So intrigued to see how this will come up. So here we are, we're queuing at the moment. Um, that just means it's uploading. Now we're moved on to the generation stage and you can see the progress bar coming along here. So it's actually pretty quick. Um, I've used quite a few other image generators in my time and this one seems quite uh, zippy. So yeah, you know, really good. So it's just kind of downloading um, a preview image. You know, while that's working, there's nothing to stop you um, moving around and so on. 
So let's see what it's done. Okay, well, it's <laughs> it's done a few rather interesting things. It's put a swimming pool in here. Um, it's given me some brick uh, base here. Definitely the walls have come out quite well. Um, I'm really not sure why it's done uh, the brick on the sky. That's a bit crazy compared to what we had before. Um, so maybe, you know, I need to edit that image a little bit there. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, the building itself has some interest going on and quite successful. So what I could do, I could click save to file and that would actually prompt me to save this image um, maybe just down to my desktop for a second and then I could load it back in later. If I do want to though, I'm not going to do it with this one, I'm not very happy with this image, I can upscale. Um, but the other thing that I can actually do is click create similar image, maybe drop the creativity down a little bit and just click generate. So let's just see what happens there when I actually generate a similar image with lower creativity and just see how this looks. Uh, maybe it will sort my uh, sky out now. Here we go. That looks a bit more interesting. It's got rid of the uh, swimming pool feature that it had before. Um, you can see the original image here still, so that's kind of nice the way you can scroll through there. Um, it's changed the brick. Um, the sky is a bit more neutral, so I'm pretty happy with that. And it's kind of going to make it look a bit more sort of sketchy in a way. So, okay, maybe I want to go with this uh, little concept image here. So what I can actually do is click replace viewport image. Now what that will do, if I just move my visualizer out of the way, is now replace my viewport uh, with the Vectorworks viewport. So that's quite an interesting concept there. What I'm quite not quite sure about is how uh, this will work if I actually kind of make any further changes. So I wonder what would happen if I still have layer and class control. Looks like I do. And maybe if I double click back to the original design layer, um, I can actually make some changes in my model, of course. So let's just try this out. So let me set these doors. And let's just make those, maybe we'll go for uh, two panels. Let's go for two. And let's go for zero panels in the right direction. So hopefully these will be nice big doors with a three panel um, top to them above. Yeah, okay, so we can see we've made a change to this door. In fact, let's just eye drop that door and drop it onto that one just to match. Okay, that's a slightly different size of door. So there we go, we've made that change there. Let's take this original one and again, we'll just drop down and make that uh, two panels. Okay, so we physically made some changes to our model. When I click return to viewport, I'm keen to see what will happen if I click update. Uh, will it revert to the original one or will it somehow uh, regenerate the AI? I honestly don't know. So this is me finding out with you. Okay, it's as I suspected. That's fair, it's reverted back to the original viewport. So um, just bear that in mind, if you do the replace viewport, the original viewport is maintained really, um, kind of replaced temporarily by the AI one, but as soon as you update, it will go back to the new viewport. Okay, so that's fairly interesting. So what we'll do now, I think, is let's jump through to a kind of different kind of view. Um, and I'm keen to see how one of the interiors might look if I'm interested to see. So I'm gonna click on that view and click update. Just let it update so it's nice and sort of updated before we run the visualizer. And let's just have a look at how this might look. Good, so, so far, this has been uh, quite interesting, definitely fun to do. So click refresh. Okay, great, we've got our new image there. Um, let's go for a little bit more creativity and let's give it a different prompt. Okay, so let's call it contemporary interior with, um, with um, let's call it uh, modern finish. And basically make sure you get your prompts right and try and avoid spelling mistakes as well. Let's, let's go for, again, uh, wood, wood walls inside. Um, negative prompts, I'll say um, leave ceiling white. See if that works. Okay, we'll drop the creativity a little bit to begin with. Let's try about 25% or 20%. Let's go for it. Let's get generate and see what happens. So I don't know what your thoughts are with the AI technology and architecture. As I say, I've been keeping an eye on this and I think, you know, that is my only reaction to AI and architecture. 
It's very exciting. It's also a little bit scary in some ways. Some of the developments are coming very thick and fast. The way I see it though, you've got to be able to incorporate AI technology into your workflow in some level. And basically, it's definitely something that you should be aware of. Don't just bury your head in the sand because you know things are gonna develop pretty quick from here. So I think it's important that we kind of pay attention and see what happens now. You know, this is definitely a very interesting image. So we've gone from something that Vectorwitz generated using shaded technology, which is sort of, you know, quite nice, but quite sort of diagrammatic. Um, and it's made a, made a nice interpretation of this. You know, we've got some really nice finishes and materials on the worktop. Um, we've got our nice sort of timber floor here. I like the lighting. It's done a good job with the lights. It seems to have interpreted those pretty well. Um, we've still got the pool table as well. I sort of changed that over to red one for some reason. Kind of looks like it's still maintained the gym equipment. Um, and things like that screen have been maintained. It's definitely tweaked the image a bit. So, you know, obviously AI can be quite unpredictable, but this has been quite a successful image. So let's basically create a bitmap object. And let me just move my visualizer out of the way. And you can see, let me just put that side by side. Uh, the kind of image we have created there. So there's our original image, there's our new one. And as I said before, I really like the way you can just immediately kind of go in, start to maybe do a bit of softening, maybe desaturate a bit. And, and you know, suddenly that looks really, really cool as a quick sketch. So this is working quite well, I think, so far. And I think, you know, there's some exciting technology built into the AI visualizer for Vectorworks here. So let's see what happens if we uh, increase our creativity and we basically generate a similar image. In fact, let's go all the way. Let's go all the way up. Um, and the only thing I think we'll do is let's just say, um, let's call it tiled floor, tiled walls inside. And let's go for it. Let's just regenerate again. Now, <laughs> I do find that AI technology is something that you've got to have a little play with to get the best results. Sometimes they can be quite unpredictable um, and you probably will waste a little bit of time before you kind of get a confidence in where you're heading with it. But in terms of the image making, it might throw something up that you hadn't thought of. And I think that is the true value of AI at the moment in the architectural sphere. Um, it's coming up with some really interesting concepts here. Um, you know, it's definitely changed my image dramatically, but that is because I told it to have a lot of creativity. Um, and you can see it's really come up with some creative concepts here. You know, it's added uh, replacement furniture. It's kind of done some more work outside. Um, it's changed the ceiling direction. So look, to be honest, it's a very, very different form of image to the original design. So I'm not sure how useful that is in this scenario. But it might just be that it throws some ideas up uh, that spark a few ideas for you that you can actually do in your modeling. And, you know, with a, a sort of less creativity, maybe something a bit more interesting. I'd be really interested to see what the community make of this and what everybody comes up with. Um, but definitely I can see us using this in early stage concept work as well. So I might do another few tests on this and other videos. So if you are around, uh, new around here, please make sure you like and subscribe for more videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.